Situated on the north banks of the River Tagus, the charm of Lisbon exists in its strong links to the past. Facing the cathedral is the heart of Lisbon's most captivating district. Alfama is furtive ground for timeless exploration and getting lost is par for the course. Blind alleyways called becos reveal a bewitching world of supernatural rituals and medieval customs where women still haul their washing to public fountains and late at night the brooding sound of fado seems to come from every nook and cranny. The iconic dome of the National Pantheon of Santa Ingracia rises majestically over the jumbled mazes of Alfama. Built in 1682, it's a magnificent example of Portuguese Baroque, which at the time created a stir for its innovative design and craftsmanship. It was to be an epic of Sistine Chapel proportions for one architect, Juaua Antunes, a humble stonemason who was appointed royal architect and was considered the greatest architect of his time. The Santa Lucia Church was the church of the military order of the Knights of Malta. The tiled scenes on the outer walls of the Igreja de Santa Lucia depict Martin Monitz, Lisbon's famous knight and martyr, who tied himself to the castle gate in order that Afonso Henrique's crusaders could take Lisbon from the Moors. The intensive use of decorative tiles covering the outside of the buildings in Lisbon is something the visitor will undoubtedly notice. This usage, intensified by Brazilian immigrants during the 19th century, marks the golden period of tiles covering facades. The first techniques of hand printing and or painting were substituted after industrialization by mechanical printing. Lisbon's cathedral was built in 1147 on the site of a mosque by Dom Afonso Enriquez in triumphant symbolism following the Moorish defeat. The cathedral is built like a Norman fortress with a muscular western facade of Romanesque and Gothic design. The Roman cross plan with three aisles is a triforium over the central aisle transept and three eastern chapels. The central aisle is roofed with barrel vaulting. Nowadays, only the nave and the transept are still Romanesque. The Moors and Romans were here first, and excavations are uncovering relics from older originals. Other items of interest 
are the 14th century sarcophagus of Lopo Fernandez Pacheco and the original nave and aisles. The Castello de São Jorge stands above the centre of Lisbon to the east and is clearly visible from a long way off. The 110 metre high hill on which the castle stands also constitutes the central starting point of Lisbon's development. The origins of this former fortress date back to an Iron Age settlement on this site, which was occupied by the Romans in about 205 BC. The castle area is square-shaped and originally was completely encircled by a wall forming a citadel. Completed in 1966 and originally named after dictator Salazar, this suspension bridge across the Targus River changed its name after the revolution of April 25, 1974. It's partially encircled by a moat, which is now dry. The bridge crosses the Targus at a height of 70 metres and its foundations on the Lisbon side at 79 metres. The Geronimus Monastery is the most impressive symbol of Portugal's power and wealth during the Age of Discovery. King Manuel I built it in 1502 on the site of a hermitage founded by Prince Henry the Navigator, where Vasco da Gama and his crew spent their last night in Portugal in prayer before leaving for India. It was built to commemorate Vasco da Gama's voyage and to give thanks to the Virgin Mary for its success. Manueline, the style of architecture that bears the founder king's name, combines flamboyant Gothic and Moorish influences with elements of the nascent Renaissance. The Manueline style of architecture, particular to Portugal, is an ornate blend with signs of seafaring, nature and monarchy, rope, flora, fauna and coats of arms sculpted into the columns this style of architecture became a style of art that served to glorify the great discoveries of the age. The Mosteiro dos Geronimos is considered by many to be the best example of Manueline architecture in the world. The Timpana South Portal has scenes from the life of St. Jerome above the doorway and the Portuguese coat of arms in the arch between the two Timpana. Underneath the Timpana, on the doorframe, are medallions representing possibly Queen Maria and King Manuel. The ornate main entrance to the monastery 
was designed by Juárez de Castillo and is considered one of the most magnificent of its time. This shrine-like portal is large, 32 meters high and 12 meters wide, extending up for two stories. The south portal by Juan of Castile extends upward for two stories and is framed by two buttresses. The door jams at the lowest level depict the Twelve Apostles. Three of the Twelve Apostles are on the left-hand side jams of the south portal. On the south portal is an enormous window with an elaborate carved frame. The western part of the convent complex is more than 182 meters long. The Monument to the Discoveries is a monument that celebrates the Portuguese who took part in the Age of Discovery of the 15th and 16th centuries. It's located on the estuary of the Targus River in the Belém parish of Lisbon, where ships departed to their often unknown destinations. The monument consists of a 52-metre-high slab of concrete carved into the shape of the prow of a ship. Built in 1515 as a fortress to guard the entrance to Lisbon's harbour, the Belém Tower was the starting point for many of the voyages of discovery, and for the sailors, it was the last sight of their homeland. It's a monument to Portugal's age of discovery, often serving as a symbol of the country, and UNESCO has listed it as a World Heritage Monument. Built in the Manueline style, it incorporates many stonework motifs of the discoveries, sculptures depicting historical figures such as St. Vincent, and an exotic rhinoceros that inspired Dürer's drawing of the beast. The architect, Francisco de Arruda, had previously worked on Portuguese fortifications in Morocco, so there are also Moorish-style watchtowers and other Moorish influences. Facing the river are arcaded windows, delicate Venetian-style lodges, and a statue of Our Lady of Safe Homecoming, a symbol of protection for sailors on their voyages. Originally conceived as a lighthouse and simultaneously a defensive fortress for the port of Restello, Manuel I had the tower built in 1515 on a small island off the riverbank. Many typical elements of Manueline decoration are clearly recognisable. The coat of arms forming turrets and the railings on the small balconies bear the cross of the Knights of Christ, while the Portuguese coat of arms with a crown can be seen on the main facade, together with our miliary spheres on both sides.
Baixa is regarded as the real centre of Lisbon. It lies in a hollow between Bairro Alto and Chiado in the west and the opposite quarter which rises up to Castelo de São Jorge. Three main streets running parallel through the middle of this shopping zone are Gold, Rua da Ouro, Silva, Rua da Prato and the pedestrian centre lane, Rua Augusta. This grid of retail bliss is reminiscent of an old-fashioned mini Manhattan. At the end of Rua Augusta, walk through the arch into the largest square in town, the Praca do Comercio. Baixa remains an imposing district, with elegant squares, pedestrianized streets, cafes and shops. This boulevard of freedom, built in the 19th century, in the style of the Champs-Élysées in Paris, is the main avenue of the city. It runs north for a mile, from Restauradores to Marquise de Pombal Square. Today, the avenue still has a certain elegance, with fountains and café tables shaded by trees, as well as a pavement decorated with abstract patterns. This large square commemorates the country's liberation from 60 years of Spanish rule in 1640. In the centre is a patterned pavement surrounding a 30-metre-high obelisk with two bronze figures on the pedestal depicting victory and freedom. Named after Britain's Edward VII, who visited the city in 1903 to reaffirm the Anglo-Portuguese alliance, this is the largest park in central Lisbon. In the centre of the square is a statue of King Jose I showing him on horseback, wearing his emperor's mantle and measuring 14 metres in height, counting from the pedestal. The tram roads of Lisbon are now used by about 200 wagons of the old type, many of them built before the First World War in Sheffield in the UK. Two wagons have been restored into their original shape and are used for guided tours. The Arco da Rua Augusta leads from Praca do Comercio to the bikes' main pedestrianised street. The figures on the arch include Vasco da Gama and the Marquis of Pombal. Rossio, the heart of Lisbon, is the liveliest square in the city, where people stop to sit and relax at the many atmospheric cafes with outdoor seating.
Bairro Alto is a picturesque working class quarter dating from the 16th century, which has traditionally been the city's bohemian haunt of artists and writers. Its grid of streets is quiet during the day, but is transformed at night into the city's vibrant nightlife quarter. Behind colorful and graffiti ridden facades is a variety of excellent traditional and international restaurants tourist-packed fado houses, and a multitude of sleek bars and stylish alternative fashion shops that stay open until late at night. The Carmo lift was built between 1898 and 1901 and was officially opened on August the 31st, 1901. Two cabins travel up and down the tower with room for 25 people in each. The elaborate exterior is in a neo-Gothic style with touches of filigree. From the upper exit, there's a marvelous view of the Rossio and the grid-like street layout of the Baixa, as well as the Castello de São Jorge opposite. The Igreja do Carmo was destroyed by the earthquake and now houses the archaeological museum. It's one of Lisbon's most unusual memorials. The ruins are immediately obvious from the Rossio and from the bridge leading from the Elevador do Carmo but appear less noticeable from the Largo do Carmo. One reason for this is the location of the church. It was built on a slope to the west of the Baixa, so that with the western main facade incorporating the entrance portal kept relatively low, the eastern part with the chancel had to be built even lower and is thus more striking. The partially ruined Convento de Carmo was once Lisbon's largest convent. Today, open-air summer orchestral concerts are held beneath its majestic archways. Rossio is one of the most beautiful squares in Lisbon. There are two beautiful baroque fountains situated at each end of the square. This pedestal holds a statue of Dom Pedro IV. On the north side of the square, is the Dona Maria II National Theatre, a monumental neoclassical building built in the 1840s. The portico has six ionic columns and crowning the pediment is a statue of playwright, Gil Vicente. Renovated palaces, magnificent churches, and an impressive castle mirror Lisbon's rich cultural heritage. 